Hi everyone, Derek Johnson with Tatango.com. I'm at InnoVista Law today, the home of the TCPA Defense Force, and I'm sitting with Joe Bowser, a TCPA attorney. We're going to be talking today about the difference between the TCPA, which is the Telephone Consumer Protection Act, and the CTIA. So Joe, let's kick it off. What is the TCPA and what does it mean for text message marketing? Okay. So the TCPA is a law that was actually passed by Congress. Okay. The CTIA, another acronym, is a trade association run by the wireless companies. Okay. Think AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint. Um, the CTIA uh, produces guidelines that they'd like those engaged in the SMS uh, ecosystem to follow. Okay. So if you're using a short code, here are the rules. Right. Okay. Exactly. Well, rules is even strong, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Because the extent to which they're enforceable is yep. open to debate. But what certainly isn't the case is that no one can sue you for not violating, for, oh, sorry, for violating the CTIA guidelines. Okay. So CTIA guidelines are things like message and data rates may apply, help to help, stop to stop. They have all these disclosures that need to be put in there. So you're saying that a consumer cannot sue a brand because maybe they forgot to say message and data rates. Exactly. Okay. Right. That's a big confusion, I think, in our industry. And maybe it sounds TCPA, CTIA, they sound very similar, but you cannot be sued for any violation of the CTIA rules. Right. So your, your short, short code may get shut down okay. if you're egregiously violating yep. the CTIA guidelines. Okay. And it may feel traumatic <laughs> That's pretty huge, when yeah. it's happening. It is huge. And that does, you know, that does feel traumatic, but no one can sue you for not following the CTA guidelines. Okay. Someone can sue you, and every day does, yep. for violating the TCPA, okay. which is an actual law that Congress created with statutory damages of $500 to $1,500 per message. Per text message to each individual person, right? Exactly. So we're talking millions or billions of dollars that these lawsuits could be amount to if you have a million subscribers. Right. Dish wow. Network just had a case against it where the amount in controversy was over $8 billion. Wow. Because that's, what, 1,500 times how many text messages times how many people. It just adds up really quickly. Exactly. Okay, so TCPA is federal law. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing you would go to court for and consumers can sue you. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the... I think there's two things that are that I guess are required by the TCPA. Like we know the help and stop and message and data rates are required by CTIA, mm -hmm. and that's the thing that they can shut down your short code for. What can eventually lead you to in front of a judge? I guess mm -hmm. what are those things? Well, the the key thing to think about when you're engaged in SMS marketing is the consent. Okay. Right. So SMS are going to mobile phones. Yep. Mobile phones have a you know separate set of rules that apply to them under the TCPA. And if you're going to be sending marketing-related SMS, you want prior express written consent. Okay. And we've talked about that. And if you're going to be sending informational messages, you want at least prior express consent. Yep. But while you're at it, you might as well just get the written variety get the whole thing. and get belts, belts and suspenders. Okay. Okay. And so if you violate that, that's what can end you up in court. Exactly. And that's what these, like Dish Network, the billion dollar lawsuits are coming from is the TCPA. Right. Or even the garden variety lawsuits that get filed every day, yeah. where the purpose is to just shake you down for a quick settlement. Okay. So really, essentially, well, you have to follow both, you know, when you're doing text messaging, because mm -hmm. you don't want your short code shut down, but also you don't want to be sued. So exactly. essentially, you're kind of combining both the TCPA requirements and the CTIA requirements into kind of your messaging campaign, but all, really only one is the thing that can get you in real trouble with you know the courts. Exactly, or, or the agencies. Yeah, right. interesting. Right. Oh yeah, because violating the Telephone Consumer Protection Act, it's not just a consumer can sue you, right? Right, the F FTC, the Federal Trade okay. Commission, the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, and state attorneys general all can come after those who violate the TCPA. Okay. And CTIA, it's only the short code can be shut down. Exactly. Or suspended or terminated or whatever it is. Right. Okay. Wow. So they have their own set of consequences. Yep. But not as drastic as uh, all those acronyms that you said just right. now. Okay. Exactly. Interesting. So that hopefully answers the question between what is the TCPA and what is the CTIA, how they differ, which one's law, which one's not law, um, but definitely worth looking into if you're doing text message marketing. Both are important, maybe one's m a little more important just because it has such, what is it, the statutory damages? Mm -hmm. Th those are pretty high, $500 to $1,500 per text message. So again, both need to be accounted for when doing text message marketing.
But if anything's going to keep you up at night, it should be the TCPA. <laughs> yeah, especially because you're an attorney, so you would say that, obviously. Uh, again, my name is Derek Johnson with Tatango.com. We have Joe Bowser from InnoVista Law and the TCPA Defense Force. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching our video today. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up on YouTube. If you want to see more of these types of videos, be sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have comments or questions, please leave a uh, comment or question in the comment section below.